let's check in with our garden, shall we? Uh, if you have a little windowsill garden going, make sure you are close to it for this video because we will be talking about what you can see in the garden. Okay, let's see where we're at. When our seeds started to sprout, we first saw two leaves come out of the soil. They unfolded and most of our mixed greens looked exactly the same at that time. These two first leaves are kind of like training wheels for the plant. They come with the seed and they provide food for the plant and a way for it to catch the sunlight while the plant is working hard to grow its first true leaves. Sometimes these training wheels um, are heart-shaped, like in our mixed greens, and sometimes they are oval, um, like, like these ones. They're just coming out and unfolding. You can see that there. After a little while, uh, we started seeing what we call true leaves on our sprouts. These true leaves can give us more of a clue of what kind of plant this is going to be. And our mixed greens started looking a lot more mixed. See? Have you started seeing true leaves in your garden? Can you still see the first set of heart-shaped leaves? Uh, like... Like this one? This first set of true leaves on our mixed greens here, we can eat these. Um, they make a delicious little salad. So let me show you how to harvest them without hurting the plant in such a way that it doesn't grow anymore. Um, for harvesting, we need a colander and a pair of scissors. The scissors need to be clean, so make sure that they are washed. Uh, let's ask um, an adult to help us with cleaning our scissors before we do this. Uh, and then we want to look at the larger leaves. We want to cut it um, kind of round about where uh, the stem of the leaf touches the stem of the plant. So if I take about this much off, and this leaf will be really nice to eat, and the plant will be just fine to continue growing this way. Once we've harvested some of our greens, uh, we can wash them and put them in a salad. <clears throat> Let's look into the future for some of our other plants. To be able to do that, we will look at all the different parts that a plant grows. Um, for this part of our video, you can use the six parts of a plant worksheet. Uh, that we've made, or grab a piece of paper and a pencil, and you can draw along with us. Um, let's see if we can name all the parts of a plant. Let's start at the bottom. Roots have several jobs. First of all, they anchor the plant into the soil. Uh, as we know, they are one of the first things that grow uh, and make sure it doesn't fall over. Very important. Uh, the roots also transport water and nutrients up from the soil towards other parts of the plant. The straight thing in the middle there uh, that helps hold the plant upright and strong against the wind is the stem. The stem also has an important job to transport those nutrients and water up towards the bits of the plant that need it. After our stems, our leaves come in. Leaves are big and flat and are angled towards the sun because their job is to turn sunlight into plant food. Have you noticed that our little sprouts are bending towards the window? They're doing that to make sure the leaves have lots of chance to catch the sun. Plants are very smart that way. Uh, some plants even fold their leaves in at the end of the day because the sun disappears. 
After our roots grow deep and our stems grow tall and our leaves grow big, what is the next phase for this plant? It will start to grow flowers. Uh, flowers are there to make sure that the plant can produce more plants in the future. This happens through a process called pollination. Can you tell me which creatures help us with pollinating our plants? Most of them can fly. Some live in big groups, have fuzzy bodies, and produce golden sticky liquid together. It's bees! All kinds of different bees help us with pollination. A very, very important job because without pollination, we wouldn't be able to get to the next stage of our plant, which is making fruit. The fruit of a plant appears after the pollination of its flowers. The fruit of a plant is often what we eat, like apples or tomatoes or peas. I know it's strange to call peas uh, a fruit and not a vegetable, but if it appears after a flower and we're having a conversation about how plants grow, we call them fruits. Our peas and beans in our outdoor garden are self-pollinators. Uh, so we don't need to invite bees into our home to make sure we get peas and beans. Uh, did you know you can eat different parts of a plant, not just the fruit? For this next exercise, uh, we're going to use the sheet that you just made. And let's see if we can come up with two examples of each part of the plant and an example of a vegetable or a fruit that we can eat. Uh, write them down on your worksheet or next to your drawing. So two examples of a stem that we eat, uh, a plant whose leaves that we eat, flowers that you can eat, and so forth. Any examples of roots that you thought of can go right next to the word roots on your worksheet. Let me give you a sneaky example. Carrots are a root that we eat. This is also a great activity to do with the adult in your life. Together, you can come up with fun and different examples for each of the six parts of a plant. We are in total looking for 12 examples of vegetables and fruits, but if you'll find more, that's great. At the end of this video, we'll show you our examples. Did you know that there are many plants where we can eat more than just one part? Like carrots, they make beautiful frilly green leaves above the soil that are edible. Uh, so do beets and radishes. The pea plant, actually, you can eat everything uh, that is above ground. The peas, of course, but also the leaves and the stem. Next time in our garden check-in, we'll chat about harvesting from our pea plants that are doing really well over there at the window. So, see you next time. Um, maybe it's time for a vegetable stretch? Of a plant.